Hi there, welcome to this Kaplan Masterclass on MPV exam technique. My name is Andrew Mower and I'm a tutor at Kaplan Financial. So what this video is about, first of all, we're going to think about some top tips when you're attempting one of the bigger MPV questions in your exam. We're then going to think about the layout and how that works um, for these questions, the best way to structure your MPV and make it look really neat and tidy and easy to mark for the markers and therefore get loads of marks. And finally, we'll think about some next steps. So what we're going to do to make sure that you're ready um, if you, this comes up in your exam. So in terms of some top tips for MPVs, the first one is, is, is something you'll hear from every tutor is about reading the question carefully. Um, now, that's particularly the case with MPVs um, because there's so much information that's often given to you in these bigger MPV questions. And there'll be little bits in there sometimes that you won't necessarily need. Now, firstly, um, the thing I want to point out to you is about relevant cash flows. So we just need to make sure that you're only including cash flows that are relevant. Um, now, I've actually done a separate Kaplan masterclass on relevant cash flows. So if you're not too sure what I mean by this, uh, there is a short video available that you can go and watch on that. Um, but the key thing is that they need to be uh, in the future. Um, they need to be incremental. and they need to be uh, cash. Apologies for my uh, my dodgy writing, but uh, very hard to write on this little screen, but yeah, future incremental and cash um, for them to be considered relevant. Now, often what they'll do in the bigger MPVs is they'll throw in things like, uh, I don't know, some market research that, um, that we paid for last year. And that's in the past, that's what we call a sunk cost. So you need to ignore that and then you need to state why you've ignored it. So just the first thing we need to do when we're doing MPVs is just think every number, do I need that? Is that relevant um, for my calculation? We then need to think about inflation um, so as well. So often uh, things will be given to you in what they call current prices or in today's terms, um, and then you'll need to go away and inflate that. So watch out for any mention of inflation uh, and also tax, um, thinking about, um, your capital allowances or, or tax level depreciation, um, and also looking out um, for any uh, tax that's, that may be in arrears, so payable the year after it's incurred. Um, so just um, make sure that, yeah, you're looking at uh, those, you're reading the question really, really carefully and picking out all those key numbers. Now, in terms of layout, I'm always good to, um, to make sure it's, it's neat and tidy, as I've mentioned. Um, one of the big things whenever I talk to markers is, if it's clearly labelled workings and they're easy to find, um, they'll be really happy. If, if you, I've, I've, I've marked a few in the past where it says, oh, this will be in working one. And I'm looking, I'm like, where's working one? And it'll be pages later and it won't be labelled. And you're thinking, is that that? Does that relate to this part of the question? Like, wh wh where am I? I don't know. I don't know if I'm even marking the right question anymore. Um, if it's hard to mark for the markers, you're not going to get many marks. Um, you, you, you put them right off. So really clearly label those workings um, and yeah, just make sure it's, it's neat and tidy. Now, probably more than in any other question, the most important thing with MPVs is about just to keep going. I know a lot of people in the past, a lot of my students have, um, have been trying an MPV in class and they can't find a number. They'll be, they'll be stuck on maybe even sales or costs, you know, right at the top of an MPV. And again, I don't know how to deal with this inflation. I'm, I'm a bit stuck. Um, don't let that put you off. You just need to keep going. And if you are stuck, as I've said here, just make something up and keep going because you'll still get the marks later on. You'll lose the marks for your sales or whatever, fine. But you know, if this is a, a 15 mark MPV and you lose one mark, I'm sure most of you would take 14 out of 15 on the exam day. So just keep going and um, just keep going. The markers will know what you've done um, and they'll be able to follow it through anyway uh, and just keep giving you those marks. So don't stop if you can't find something. And actually, a lot of the easy marks are, are towards the end of an MPV. So things like getting the right discount factors and doing the discounting and, and the comments, as I've mentioned later, all of those bits you'll get marks for. Um, and uh, like I say, they should be relatively easy marks. So a lot of the easy marks in MPV come at the end. So you need to make sure you're, you do get onto those. Um, and don't forget these comments. A lot of students do an MPV, get your answer, you get your number, and you go, brilliant. What a good job I've done there. Um, I smashed that question. Happy days. Um, let's move on to the next, the, the next question. But you always need to comment on an MPV. So, you know, the whole um, accept, reject type thing. Um, and, and also... 
um, state any items that you've ignored. So if, if there was that market research cost that uh, was incurred last year, just put a little note saying uh, the 25 grand of uh, market research is not relevant as it's a sunk cost. And often that will get you credit. So make sure you are just doing that. If ever you're not sure in an MPV whether something is relevant or not, you can always just discuss your thought process almost. Just write down what you're thinking. Well, it depends whether that was incurred in this year or this year. You, you, people are always a bit wary. They sit there thinking, do I include that or not? If ever you're really, really not sure, you could always just write, do what you think's right and just almost write down, it depends on this. Uh, and, and the markers will appreciate the, the effort that you've put in and, and yeah, explaining your thought process um, is often a good way to do things. Okay, um, as I said at the start, the second thing I want to do here is, is look at laying out a typical MPV. Now, this isn't going to be suitable for every single MPV question that's, that's out there across all the different qualifications, but it's a good start. It's a nice starting point um, to try to, uh, to, to give us something to work with. Now, this is actually a three-year MPV. Although I've gone up to year four, um, it's actually only three years. Um, that fourth year is because I've done tax in arrears in this question. Again, um, in, in some exams, that's common. In some, it's not. But all that means is that your tax, you're paying tax the year after. So that relates to that, that relates to that, that relates to that. So that column there is purely for tax. Um, so we don't want to be putting any um, sales in there or, or scrap value is often something that people accidentally put into that year. This is actually a three-year project with three years worth of sales and so on. Um, but because tax in arrears, we've gone into that fourth year column. So I'd always start with sales costs. Uh, there might be more than, there might be different variable costs, different fixed costs, keep them separate if necessary. Um, and you may well need to inflate those. Um, so you may need to um, uh, inflate these. Um, if you're told to um, at the specific rates, um, add all those up, that will give you your net trading income. We then pay tax on it. Your initial investment and scrap should be nice, straightforward marks. You've then got your tax savings from tap, uh, your tax allowable depreciation, or, um, otherwise known as your, your capital allowances. Um, I'd always do that as a separate working. Um, so I would do that as a, a separate bit. Um, you might have an extra cash flow in here, actually. There might be another one in here, depending on the, the timing of the purchase of your asset. Um, and also this, that final year figure, um, I've assumed there it's a balancing allowance. So we're actually saving tax in that final year. Um, if you make a gain on disposal, that would actually be a balancing charge, in which case that figure there would be negative instead. So it could go either way. Um, so there could be a, a slight difference there, but um, hopefully you get the idea. Uh, and then you've got your working capital. Um, so those incremental working capital figures. Um, so that will always be negative And uh, more often than not, it's going to be at time zero. Uh, and then in that final year, that will always be positive because you're going to release that that working capital at the end. Uh, and that line should, again, in most MPVs, the sum of that line should be zero, your working capital. Working capital is just like a bit of a, an, a bit of a loan to the project almost. To get it up and running, you release it all at the end. So it should all net off to zero, um, hopefully, uh, at the end. You then... Um, Add it all up. Um, discount at the, the discount rate. And if we are inflating things, that would need to be what we call the money rate. Now, if we give you the real rate, then you're going to need to um, turn it into the money rate. So there is a little formula you can use to, to switch it to the money rate instead. Um, when I'm doing them at discount rates, I would use uh, a little formula. You can use tables, but I do the, the formula one plus the rate uh, to the power of minus the year. Um, and I use that formula to, um, to, to do my discount rate. So if it's 10%, percent i would be doing one plus 10% uh, to the power of minus. I would then click on the year. Um, so in, for example, in year zero, I'd click on that cell. Here, I'd click on that cell. Uh, and you can just drag that formula across then um, to, work out the, uh, to work out the discount factors for you. Um, so you just do one plus the rate to the power of, which is uh, shift six uh, on most keyboards. So the little top hat. Um, and then you can just do minus the year. And if you click on the year, um, you can then drag it across and it'll, it'll fill, it, fill it in all for you, um, which is nice. Um, times your cash flows by your discount rates, um, and that will give you your present values. Um, so that will give you your, your answer at the end. Um, the MPV then is just the sum um, of um, all of those, isn't it? So it's the sum of all of those present values. 
Tim PV is that, um, and that will give you your answer. And then don't forget to comment. Um, so you get your answer. Uh, and as I said earlier, you then need to comment um, on both the whether you should accept the project or not, uh, and also whether you should um, any any cash flows that you've ignored. Um, so stating any of those. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a structure to start with. Um, and so that'd be the way I do it. I'd just work my way through the question and, and start putting things in um, and gives you that a bit. Yeah, like I say, a bit of a pro forma almost to, uh, to get going with these MPVs. In terms of what you can do to help improve your MPVs, again, they're really, really common in a lot of exams. So they're a, a really good area to work on and make sure you're good at them. Um, practice questions to time as well. Um, so don't forget... Um, that these exams are often quite time pressured. So you need to be making sure you're, you're doing these. You're not spending an hour when you should be spending half an hour on them because um, that's going to um, mess up the rest of your exam potentially. So make sure you're practicing these to time and getting quicker and quicker as you go on. Um, review your answers. Yeah, a lot of um, these places, a lot of these qualifications will have model answers for you to, to look at. Um, what I would say is, don't just look at the final answer. Look at each line of your MPV. If you just look at your final answer, your MPV, um, you may well be miles off. You might be, the MPV might be, uh, I don't know, plus 80 million, and your answer, it might be minus 700 million. And a lot of students then look at that and go, oh, I've done it all wrong, get really disheartened. All it takes with an MPV is one number to be wrong somewhere. And it can throw it off massively. Yeah, I've, I've seen students just miss a zero uh, when they're doing their sales. They've just missed off a single zero in one of the cells. And then their MPV, as you can imagine, is, is miles off. So don't look at the final answer and just uh, and compare that. Um, what I do is each line, look at your sales, look at your costs, look at your tax, look at everything and, and see how you got on with those instead. Um, because again, you will still earn marks. Even if you do make a mistake early on, you still will earn those marks. Um, when you're doing your MPVs, if there are any areas of weakness, for example, I don't know, working capital or inflation that you spot, um, then it might be worth going back to your notes and, and just focusing on that, honing in on those areas to improve um, as you go through. Um, but it's good to look at the whole question um, and, then, and then go back to the weaker areas rather than sort of working through every little bit of it, of it beforehand and then trying them. Um, I'm all about getting straight into the questions and see how you get on. And a really important bit with MPVs, often there will be part A to do your MPV, part B, um, discuss um, what other factors they should consider or what are the weaknesses of, uh, of, of this method or what assumptions have we made. A lot of students don't bother with those bits because you, you, get, you love the numbers. You know, you, you've chosen this as a, a potentially, or probably you've chosen this as a, as a career and you're doing this qualification because you love numbers. Um, and you do your calculations you get an answer and you go great i really enjoyed that that was good fun i like mpvs and then you yeah you, you forget about it but it is really important that you do do those discursive bits because those marks add up yeah there'll be little three four five mark um discursive bits often um attached to an mpv and loads of students yeah, they, they're weak at that they they're quite good at the numbers and then they're not so good at those discursive bits so just make sure you're practicing those as well uh, make sure you are doing those um when you're doing these questions Okay, there are all my top tips for MPVs. Um, I hope that was useful. And, um, and as I say, keep practicing and you will get better at these. There are lots of nice marks in MPVs, so fingers crossed it will be fine. Um, but I wish you good luck with your studies uh, and all the best for any exams that you have coming up as well.